Hi everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. The topic of today's video is why aren't there more AAA ports on the M1 Mac? So when the Apple Silicon M1 chips were first announced, I thought that this could represent a new revolution in gaming on the Mac. So the first reason is because Apple were finally ditching Intel and their terrible integrated graphics solution. So finally we're going to have some good performance and also vastly improved gaming performance too. The second reason was that the M1 chip was going to be the baseline models. So the M1 was announced for the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. And instead of having different levels of performance for each Mac, developers would be able to target a single chip and optimize for that chip, just like they do for a console. The third reason was that the M1 chip would also offer the ability to natively play iPhone and iPad games. And the reason this is exciting is because the iPhone and iPad app store contains the largest gaming market share in the world. So my theory at the time was that this was now a golden opportunity for developers and publishers to create a single code base that could release on all Macs simultaneously without having to worry about different graphics cards, different levels of performance, and also have the game playable on the iPhone, iPad, even the Apple TV too. However, it's now been nine months since the release of the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and the future that I envisioned hasn't exactly panned out how I rather optimistically hoped it would. There's not been a deluge of ports to the Mac operating system. I thought at the very least that, that the most popular iPhone and iPad games would get Mac support because they would have the same architecture and that there wouldn't be that much work in order to add the correct aspect ratio and the full keyboard and mouse support. So for example, I've got my iPhone screen recording here we've got our Call of Duty Mobile which is one of the most popular iOS titles and I've done a search for Call of Duty Mobile and this application is not available. Now this game is perfectly playable if you sideloaded the application and the game itself performs very well with the controller however the developers have opted out and they've also gone ahead and banned players who play on the M1 Mac using any one of the sideloading methods. Another example is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night so this was supposed to have a Mac port when it was first announced as a Kickstarter game but this was cancelled However, they have gone through the effort of creating an iPhone port. However, the developer has opted out of releasing this app on the iPhone iPad section of the App Store. And this is a real shame because Bloodstained Bridge of the Night is perfectly playable via Parallels. So that's running the Windows virtual machine and playing the game through that. I don't think on a technical level, it would be that much work to get Bloodstained actually working as a native Mac port. I recognize that there is a lot of QA that needs to be done in order to get this to work on the Mac operating system. So for example, the aspect ratios need to be tested. However, the actual technical side, which is getting it to work on an ARM chip in the first place, is done. There is relatively small amount of work, which developers are basically not doing in order to bring this game to this additional platform. And I think that there's a real shame that this work is not happening. And one of the main reasons that developers and publishers deprioritize the macOS port of a game is because of the low number of active players that actually play on the Mac. So for example, with Rocket League, we had a perfectly functional Steam client. However, when they transitioned to the Epic Game Store, they decided to drop macOS support. And they cited that one of the main reasons for this was due to the low number of active players on macOS and Linux, which only represented 0.3% of the active player base. Another reason is technical as well, so developers and publishers don't want to invest the time and money involved in making sure that the game functions on the Metal Graphics API, which is proprietary to the Apple ecosystem. So what we have is the classic chicken or egg situation. There aren't enough macOS gamers to justify dedicating resources into making ports for the platform. And at the same time, gamers don't take macOS seriously as a gaming platform because there aren't enough games developed for it. This is despite the fact that the M1 chip is far more capable of gaming than say a Switch and is capable of graphics hardware that exceed a PlayStation 4. So here you can see in the Steam hardware survey of July, 2021, if we look at the operating system version, we can see that the Mac OS percentage is sitting at 2.51% and it's actually declined by 0.03%. And of course, if you play a game on Parallels or on Crossover, you'll actually be contributing to the Windows hardware survey too. So it's easy to see why some developers don't really take their Mac OS ports that seriously. So for example, the recent strategy game Humankind was advertised as having a Mac port. 
However, in this forum post, what they've announced is that the Mac version has been postponed by a few weeks. However, this kind of miscommunication is causing some issues, especially in the forums, and people are expecting to be able to play the game straight away. And one of the main reasons why the developers think they can get away with this is because there are not enough macOS players to actually complain about this miscommunication issue. Another game that people have been really excited about is Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is a remaster of the original Diablo 2 game. And what's ironic about this situation is that the original Diablo 2 did have a macOS port to begin with, but they are not releasing the remaster on the Mac operating system. This is a real shame because Blizzard used to be one of the pioneers of the macOS port of their AAA titles, for example, StarCraft 2, Diablo 3. Also, they were responsible for the very first big M1 Apple Silicon Mac port of World of Warcraft, which manages to achieve very good performance on the M1 chip. So I know I've been a little bit negative about the state of macOS ports, especially AAA games, but the good news is that there are plenty of AAA games that you can still play on the Mac operating system on the M1 chip. So for example, I'm showing footage here from Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a little bit of an older game now, but it's still extremely good. It's one of the best looking games on the M1 Mac. Another game here we have is Civilization VI, and it works really well on the M1 chip, and it's probably one of the best plays to play this game on a mobile computer. We also have a game like Borderlands 3, which is playable online, has fantastic graphics, and is one of the best action games on the M1 Mac. And we also have more cerebral games like Frostpunk, which is a survival management game set in a post-apocalyptic future. And I think that these are all examples of games that work really well on the Mac operating system. It's a little bit rare to have these higher budget games on the Mac, but they do exist. They are being developed and ported and they work wonderfully. And one developer I feel that is actually taking advantage of the power of the Apple ecosystem is Larian Studios. So the footage here is from Divinity Original Sin 2, which is a role playing game which is being played on the iPad. Now this is fantastic because it means that they're really leveraging the work that they've done on the ARM chip and they've ported their work from their Mac desktop port and then being able to make that work for the iPad as well. And Larian are also responsible for Baldur's Gate 3 which is one of the few AAA games on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac which has a native ARM port. And this is one of the deepest role-playing games that you can play. It is still in early access, but once it releases, it's going to be one of the most fully fleshed out role-playing games that you can play on the M1 Mac. And we shouldn't discount the Apple Arcade game subscription service. A lot of people think that this game service is aimed at casual users only, but a lot of these games really border on the double AA, A, triple A budget levels of gaming. For example, we have the game World of Demons, which is made by Platinum Games, who also develop games such as Neo Automata and Bayonetta and the wonderful 101. We also have a game like Beyond a Steel Sky, which is the sequel to the classic Beneath a Steel Sky, which is a 3D adventure game with fully voiced acting and a relatively high budget. We have the JRPG Final Fantasy successor called Fantasian, which has been made by the Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi. And we also have proper licensed sports titles, for example, NBA 2K21. So it's important to remember that we're still actually in the very early stages of the M1 cycle. So not that many people have necessarily upgraded if they've got a recent Mac already. So for example, if we look at the Steam hardware survey and we scroll down to the CPU section, we don't actually have information about how many users are actually using the M1, but we can kind of tell by looking at the eight CPU scores. There are not actually that many Macs which use eight CPUs. It's only the Mac Pro and the M1 Mac. And we can see here that Mac Pro is only at 0.66% in total. So we can estimate that we're just under 20 25% uptake for the M1 chip at the moment. So this means that a lot of people are still using the Intel Macs. And until there is a more full transition to the Apple Silicon computers, which have a guaranteed minimum graphics performance, which is going to be far superior to the Intel integrated graphics chips, then we still have the potential to see quite a lot of growth, especially in the double AA, A, triple A gaming sector. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you disagree with my assessment, please please leave a comment. If you'd like to see more content like this, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.